10. But let me get the uh Woo man. Sir Snuck Jimmy up on us a little bit, huh? What? Wow, what an episode, my friend. I feel like we say that every single week, but let me tell you, it just gets better and better and better and better. But before we begin, <laughs> We're about to dive into it, but this episode is brought to you by Four Cats Boutique on Etsy. You guys know we love a ton of different fandoms. A Song of Ice and Fire, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Wheel of Time, DC, Marvel, and of course, House of the Dragon. Okay, well, if you're looking for a birthday present, a Christmas gift, you guys got to check out Four Cats Boutique on Etsy. Katie and Jordan are such a big selection of stickers, earrings, keychains, art prints, bookmarks. For the reds and the greens, so you can choose your allegiance. Go big, get a full-on banner if you would like whatever you're into. You'll find the perfect gift for nerds like us on 4 Cats Boutique on Etsy. That's the number four, cats with a K. And you can even use a code BTK10 to get 10% off for checking them out through 4 Cats Boutique and BTK10. 10 guys there today's sponsor which lets us do bigger and better things for the channel and dear god my you know hello and welcome to bend the knee a song of ice and fire podcast i am sir matt the butt knight and i am sir jimmy of house nuts and i think we finally understand the beast beneath the boards <laughs> you know episode nine Episode nine is always the big episode. Was not expecting that. Uh, this episode went most of the way I would thought. It was mostly greens, but mm -hmm. man, the, the the memes, the pictures. I cannot just wait to see Twitter exploded. And I thought it was all going to be about God. We hate Aegon. Screw this guy. And we'll dive into that because there's so many cool details about his crowning. But the queen who never was, she could have ended the whole thing. She could have ended the whole thing. And <laughs> I just kind of love, and I said this last time, that Rainey's is so unreadable in her emotions and how cold mm -hmm. she seems to be by all the time she's been spurned by this, you know, absolute BS treatment she's received over the years and then for this and her, i mean i almost felt like your cars was coming matt i literally had a moment i was like are they just gonna like go off the rails here like are they really just gonna go off the rails um, i man for a second i thought she was gonna die just a second there i and actually I was did like, too i was like that would be an enormous change and by the way guys we will try to keep um please keep this in the chat uh yes. spoilery spoiler free uh we will keep this spoiler free um for the books go ahead and drop the old rate this out of five stars so we can get the chat going and see what you guys think but man this was an absolutely amazing episode first and foremost i know i've said it before but today might have been the best scored Game of Thrones. Yes. House of the Dragon episode ever. The, the music was just, it just so stood out. I mean, like 10 out of 10, five stars out of five stars doesn't begin to cover it. Yeah, the 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 intro or I'm sorry, like the first scene of this episode, that entire time the music was playing, I just kept my mouth just kept dropping open. I'm like, this music is fantastic. And the music at the end when <laughs> during the coronation, and then when the dragon comes up and the music's picking up, like, dude, my heart is still pounding. It was so good. And then his his coronation, too. I mean, it was just such a cool scene. And and I wasn't I was wondering where they were going to have it take place because they didn't necessarily say and then it's oh it's the dragon pit and then you see rainy's walking in okay and you're just like uh, uh like this is who knows what's going to happen um so let's go back let's let's go back to the beginning of the episode and work and work our way through because my god the end is just so huge Whew. we did not get we did not get uh rhaenyra or damon and i believe i saw so, like imdb or something i saw on twitter that like this episode was going to be all about the greens and the next episode I didn't this is the first time I actually have not watched the preview because I'm just like now I'm just I just want to see it as yeah. it is yeah but everything I've seen on Twitter was that this episode is going to be all about the greens and the next episode is, is going to be all about the blacks mm -hmm. yeah and uh my, my wife at towards the end she's like oh 
there's no Rhaenyra Damon, is there? And I said, ah, yeah, you didn't notice. And she's just like, oh, that, some people are going to hate that. And I was like, well, they just have to get over it. It is what it is, right? It's a decision that they made. I thought the episode was really strong. And, you know, a lot of people were talking about how the pace was moving on, on and on uh, a little too quickly. I mean, this is what happens when you kind of slow down. You get to take time. We don't have to rush through a lot of these things now. Um, but, you know, we opened up and I, I don't know if you caught this, Battaglia, which is White Worms, uh, Masaria's little you know, rat yes. in the, in the red keep, she lights some candles in the window when the yes. king dies. And I believe that is how Masaria knows that the king is dead when she meets one by what tower. one by land two by mm. sea. Okay. You know, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's how they're doing it. You know, so many things in this episode, you know, the opening again, just that it's so somber. Mm. Uh, Vis Viserys is dead. And we've been talking really this whole season about Allison. And how they're really portraying her different than in the books. And I'm beginning to not necessarily like Alicent more, but I'm really beginning to like the portrayal of her and the when and in the book, she just comes across, and we've we talked about this last week, as she just seems evil. In the book, she mm -hmm. just comes across as complete like this evil character who may have even killed Viserys, but that, that's just sort of how she's portrayed here. I actually like it more that she has this sense of honor and duty because now she genuinely feels like she is doing the right thing. Like this is what I'm supposed to do. And it, mm -hmm. and it makes these events feel more powerful for her because she feels like she, this isn't what she just wants to do. It feels like, what she feels she has to do. Yeah. And I think, you know, her being so pious and, and leaning into religion, I think she, she, and then, you know, Viserys's last words, her knowing that there is some sort of prophecy, but not knowing all the details. It's like one of these things where you can really get down a rabbit hole where you think you're being justified. Like, like you right. are ordained by God to do these things. And I don't necessarily know if it's going that deep with her, but they've definitely laid the groundwork for her type of reaction that she has. But it's really interesting to see her and Otto at a, kind of a standoff because you're right. Allison, the show is very righteous, very pious in the book. It is very much. She's on the same page as Otto. Like we don't get all the details, but like basically when, when Viserys dies, it's like, it's game on. Like it's, she it's just, time to crown Aegon. Right? Yeah. In the book, she comes across as power hungry. And I think one of the, you know, going into this, going into house of the dragon, one of the things I thought that would be good for the show and one of the things that I knew would differentiate it from Game of Thrones is that in Game of Thrones, you have, you really have, you know, you have like the War of Five Kings, right? So you have sort of five factions, really six if you count the White Walkers, and then it just gets bigger and bigger, and there's just so many players. Going into this, you know, we knew, yeah, you have some guys who are on the fringe, and some teams that are on the fringe that'll switch sides and we'll move around. But really it's one, it's just going to be two teams. And so I was kind of nervous going into this because I was like, well, it might just be too simple and that everyone's just pro Rhaenyra, but I am really just loving the way they're, they're portraying Alicent because mm -hmm. even though I'm not team Alicent and team greens, obviously, I think you will have people begin to, you know, empathize and sympathize uh, for her character. And it does sort of cause you to kind of root for her a little bit. And, and, and you need that you need, you need reasons to root for each side, which is one of the things I think that made game of Thrones. So amazing was, you know, we meet the Lannisters right out of the gate and you're like evil. They're the bad guys. It's <laughs> obvious, but then you meet Tyrion and you're like, well, okay, maybe they're not all so bad. Right. Mm. I kind of like him. And so now with Alicent and even Aemond a little bit, you kind of root for because he's, yes. you know, he's like, I should be king, actually. Uh, he, Aegon doesn't want it. And so that's, that's, a, it's a good thing the way they're doing this where you still kind of root for these people a little bit. Yeah. It's not so much, I mean, obviously it's blacks versus the greens, but that's kind of the pitch. But the actual selling point once you're into the show is the fact that these characters, even if they're within a faction, actually have a lot of their own agency. And I think that's one of the biggest differences in uh, the book to this is in the book. I never felt Allison have much of a differing opinion from Otto or any of these things because it's so, you know, 
broad. But with this, I feel like Allison has a lot more agency. Like her sending out Eamon and Chris Crispy, as we call him, uh, to go get Aegon was cool. I like that. It's like who's going to get to him first uh, results in a little sword battle or whatever. But it shows that Allison actually has like scruples that she's trying to stick to, even though she's obviously bending for old Laris, who apparently loves stinky stompers. Like he is He's a into some, There were some feet. It's and look, I will say this <laughs> to be it is it is not just a thing. It's is this I know it, it's like becoming a thing, right? Oh, the, it's a was thing. That, the it's like you're seeing it more and more in Hollywood now, right? It's like there was what was the Ben there was a Ben Affleck movie. It was like I don't know, it was like a Netflix thing or something where he's with this girl it was a few <laughs> months ago and I was all over Twitter and they everyone's like they just keep showing her feet and it's like it's a thing. So we, we gotta see out she has a tattoo too. It's like, and I was like, well, did they mean to keep that in? Like, yeah, that's the one thing I have it, or was it just you know, Olivia Cook has a tattoo? What I think we're gonna see is I almost think they're never gonna say anything, but I think we're gonna see Rhaenyra's feet and she's gonna have the same tattoo, and then it'll be like, oh, look, it's like their thing, man. So, you think it's like a bestie tattoo from back in the day? I do, I think it's like a BF, I think it's gonna <laughs> no. be a BFF tattoo. What if they put their legs, to, you know, like they they stand side by side? This is going into fans, and it's like a, and it's like a symbol, right? And it's like a symbol, and then Laris is just between them, just <laughs> rocking and rolling. Oh, my god, I don't want to see his feet, man. Oh, my god, man. <laughs> I Look, was, Warner I was Brothers tight. is hurting for money. Okay, I mean, I, I'm I get the Song of Ice and Fire Feet Finder app going, and I'm pretty sure you can start to make some bank. You know? Oh man, I uh, I was laughing aloud. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was just so dude. The, the dude playing Laris is so creepy. Like he's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy can't even continue. He's I can't just... even. I can't even. The stinky stompers, man. It just they uh, got me. Well, I got to point out this comment here from Demon's Gate. Dem toes <laughs> kind of thick. <laughs> I mean, <it's> <laughs> I'm gonna. I'll make a TikTok. Uh, Demon's Gate. You're getting. You're going on TikTok. Okay. That's, that's, that's the best comment I've seen. Uh, so. Any, anyway, oh, as, but, as, as even as, but kind of getting back to this though, real quick, Allison also has a little bit of another romantic interest that isn't so shameful. She kind of gives Crispy Cole the nod for your feelings or love that you have for your queen and your duty or whatever she said. So, are Allison have Allison and Crispy been getting it on behind Viserys' so. back? You think? I think. So. I think so. Or do yeah. you think she's manipulating him? No, I think. She, yeah, you're right. I think she's just manipulating him. I'm very curious. Very, very curious. Uh, Crispy Cole, by the way, is unbearable. I yeah. just want to, I just want him to die. The actor's so good. He's, oh, he's play. great. I, yeah. He, yeah. He's great. Yeah. I just saw he got, he, he's going to be, um, you know, how they keep doing these like Disney live action remakes of things. <laughs> um, he is going to play whatever the prince. I haven't, I haven't seen it. You know, what do they have all this? He's going to play the prince in like the tangled. They're going to do a live action tangled. I'm like, Oh, he's like, that seems like perfect for him. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. my, my wife says that he looks like he's straight out of Jersey shore that if he was like two cast members kid that she would believe it. Oh um, yeah. Which I thought that. was kind of funny. Um, yeah. I think she might be manipulating old crispy Cole, but uh, whenever Westerling takes off his cape, or in that whole before yeah. that the whole altercation before crispy i was like i know it's not going to happen but i wanted westerling to gut him right then and there i actually thought Kristen cole was going to kill him because I in the too. books western he's dead like 20 years ago yeah at this point like obviously they made um chris crispy the lord commander now but yeah in the books he had already been lord commander um, yeah but you have Grant McTavish. I mean, my God, he's like, what you know, this, oh, he's so, such an amazing actor. You can't you can't get rid of him. He's in The Witcher. He's great. Yeah, he's in a lot of things. Um, he's in a lot. Of, yeah, he's, great. You he's about, great. He's great. In everything he's in. What do you think about Beesbury getting the old head smash? It just killed at the table. What do you think of that? Uh, you know, I mean, we we kind of knew that he was he wasn't long. He wasn't long for this world from the books. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, you know, it, that whole scene was done really well because again alice it comes and she feels like she's telling everyone you know like she thinks we're ready to crown her near but she's like oh my god like viserys just told me this thing and they're like we've been planning this for 
So I they would have they would have moved forward with it. They were it was obvious they were going to move forward with it, whether she had heard Viserys say that or not. Yeah. But what did you think of her being very adamant about? We have to, you know, you you like spare Rhaenyra. It's Viserys's, um, you know, well, Viserys's daughter. What do you think? Like, how would that conversation have went <laughs> if if she hadn't heard that that dream? Well, so I uh, that that's a good question. I will say this. I'm glad that they had her bring it up and have her play the opposite side, because if you would have went from last episode, her kind of making peace with Rhaenyra and, you know, showing some genuine emotion for her husband to immediately willing to backstab and put her on the throne just because Viserys said this thing about Aegon, I would have felt like it was kind of like shoehorned a bit, but they stayed with the consistency of last episode of like her wanting some sort of peace and also to honor Viserys. And it kind of shows that she is like truly thinking in her head. She believes she's honoring Viserys' wishes, right. which she says, you know, he, I'm sure he doesn't want his daughter killed and his brother right. killed. Um, so the fact that they changed it to make her, you know, a little bit more 3d in a way, uh, I actually like it. I, I, I like the fact that they stuck with it. Um, I think it could have worked just as well for it. If uh, they would have made Allison just power hungry, but I think like what you said, maybe it would have been too, two dimensional. Right. We get right. a little bit more of complexity within the factions now, which is also going to happen in the in the blacks. I think I think on Rhaenyra's side, we're going to see some turmoil as well. And uh, we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out probably in season two. But uh, yeah, I like that. Um, I was kind of shocked when they all admit that they had been planning treason this entire time. Uh, and Beesbury's death in the books. Um, it said he might have been thrown out the window, said he might have had his throat slit. There was there was many things, whether Kristen Cole did it or whatever. Um, for me, I I think it's probably the right call to make it look like an accidental death with Kristen, you know, dribbling his head like a basketball off the table. Um, but in a way, I kind of wish it would have been a little bit more brutal. Um, like if it had just been a, thro a throat slice. Right. And then you really have Allison like, whoa, whoa, what, what, in the you know, Instead, she's kind of like, oh, my God, what has happened? This is a horrible accident. Look what's already unfolding in front of us. So, like, I get the fact that making an accident makes it a little bit more digestible for Allison being there. But at the same time, I kind of wish it would have been a little bit more like for, you know, no pun intended cutthroat, maybe. Right. Right. Well, they did. They did obviously put a few other people. Well, they hung uh, you know, <laughs> one guy and then. Right. So I mean, very obvious that they're moving quick and I thought was great. And they had to actually go find Aegon. And, yes. you know, he he didn't want it, which I thought also thought was great because that's also that is going to play in a lot more mm -hmm. with Aemon and Helena going forward. Because um, there's a lot of theories in the books, actually, that. And we kind of almost got a little hint towards it here. There's there's in the books, you know, or it actually it's not even really I don't I actually don't even know if it's a mention. It's not even one of the things that like Mushrooms mentions. It's just sort of a fan speculation is that Aemon and Helena and is actually the father of Aegon and Helena's kids. Um, there's there's a lot of theories about that. And then we see him in her room when Ren mm -hmm. uh, Allison walks in. So that kind of plays into that a little bit more. And here he's saying, you know, to Kristen Cole, I should be king. Right. We've we've both been sort of disinherited by our birth. And then Aegon says is saying to Aemon, I'll leave. You can like, I don't want it. Like, <laughs> like, bro, I don't even want this shit. <laughs> Like, just right. take it. And then the shot on a Eamon's face as he walks away. You know, I thought that was really good. Um, also, Helena, whenever she kneels, like kind of bends her head to Aegon in his coronation, she's actually facing Aemon. And Aemon is just mm -hmm. staring a hole through Aegon. And I'm like, man, this is cool. Like, this is really subtle. Yeah, it was actually all of his coronation was very powerful because they did they did something really, really cool. He's walking in and the shot is entirely on his face as he's walking into the swords coming in and he's beginning to realize mm -hmm. all these people are sort of rooting for me and oh yes. i get to be king very different than say like joffrey yep uh because joffrey just wants to be king because he's like oh i'm a king and i can do whatever i want he <laughs> doesn't want it and i think he's going to sort of get into it and then um you know um become sort of the character that he will become but as they were placing the crown on his head it was all out of focus shots and he is like in the lower third 
And it's showing everyone else's face as the crown is being put on his head. It was a very, very cool scene. Yeah. And one of the things I liked most about it was actually the facial acting from uh, the actor for Aegon, because we have kind of been led to this point, especially when I'm in the carriage ride with Allison and all those times before we can tell that Aegon struggles. It seems obviously he's kind of evil, but he also does struggle with the fact that he was kind of shunned by his father and he, he said yes. he didn't like me. Like, I don't feel like Aegon particularly feels like he has anyone that cares about him and his mother, even though obviously he deserved to be scor uh, scorned, uh, you know, that probably plays on him, too. Whenever she said, you're no son of mine, he asked, do you do you love me, mom? And she doesn't really give him that answer that he probably was looking for. So whenever he was on stage being coronated and the people start cheering for him, his facial acting, you could tell he was becoming almost intoxicated by the acceptance of the audience. And this is the moment where I think Aegon says, oh, that's what it means to be, be king, to be liked to be accepted by the people. Um, and obviously maybe at first it all goes well, and then your approval ratings go down into the, you know, the shitter after, but right. I, I feel like it was really evident that he was realizing the praise that comes with being King. And I also wonder if he has any worries about all those little bastard boys that he's been dropping off down in flea bottom because they showed the cut to the kid in the, uh, the daycare fight club they had going on down there in flea bottom. And they, and the, well, Eric, one of the Eric's says, Aegon, he said he's got them all over the place. And it's like, oh, shit. Right. Not good, Aegon. What did you think of Kristen Cole attacking one of the Erics? Yeah, wild, right? Because that that doesn't happen. Like, I, I mean, we don't no. know. We, I, I mean, we don't know, really know what, what, what happens there. For, there for a second, I almost thought he was going to, they were going to kill him. And I was like, hold, like, oh, hold, like, hold on a second here. <laughs> like, I thought they were too. Hold on a, hold on a second here. <laughs> like, and I was wondering maybe if like the one, uh, one brother is going to stab the other one in the back or something. I was kind of weird because the, the brothers get, and this isn't a really a spoiler for the future, but the brothers get split. One goes to Dragonstone, one stays in King's Landing. Right. And I was kind of expecting that split to happen at some point here. I, I assume it probably will next episode. Um, it but yeah. It kind of happened a shocked. little bit. Yeah, here because you see the one he up on the away. stair steps looking down, and then the other Eric leads Rainey's out, and then she ultimately gets to her dragon, which I guess we can we can talk about. Um, unless there's anything else before before that moment, we wanna we wanna hit on oh, let's anything, see. In the we... anything anything in the middle of the episode because there was just there was a lot of great dialogue between like Allison and Otto. She, Allison sort of tells Otto off basically, mm -hmm. and hey, like I'm in charge now. You're gonna have to step back i'm doing it my way we got to see egg on the conqueror's crown yes i was going to bring that up because me and you on a patreon episode last week we're kind of talking about the crowns and we we're talking about the difference between the crowns who's worn those crowns um so that's a really cool patreon episode that we did but uh, yeah Aegon's crown and now viserys's crown is getting kind of sent over to the side here and uh I it'll be very curious to see where that ends up right right uh but not only Aegon's crown dude but black fire in the hand of Aegon yes. when he lifts it up. Like, even though I, uh, I am not a supporter of this usurper, I got to tell you, I got chills during his coronation. It was cool. No, it was, it was a great, it was just an excellent yeah. cinematography for that. And to have it take place in the dragon pit was at least, you know, smart on their part because one, it's this huge open mm -hmm. area. Um, but also just because it's like, no, this is like Targaryen. He's wearing egg on the Conqueror's crown. Like we're making this as obvious as possible. The people at first were kind of like, well, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because no one knows the king's dead, right? They're hearing bells. Right. People are being ushered. It's it, it's craziness. And not to mention that morning, it looked like maybe Masaria's brothel was being burnt down after yes. Laris said, hey, let me do the old tug and tug. And then I'll go burn down the white worms. You know, I'll take out the head of this of this uh, spider network, I think is what he called it. So that's going to be interesting. Like Miss Arya now has a direct action against her. And I thought it was interesting that she told Otto that the the people decide, you know, ultimately it's the people who who give you the power. Um, yeah. So it, it'll be cool to see Flea Bottom represented in that manner. Um, yeah, dude, the people are a little confused in the book it, for this scene. It's actually disputed. Eustace says that there were 100,000 people in the dragon pit. I think it, that's the number. And then Mushroom says that it was like half full. People were like picking their nose. No one really cared. Some people yelled, long live the queen. You know, right. Mushroom made it sound like it was like, eh, it wasn't that big of an event. Like, 
Uh, yeah. So we saw, you know, there were tons of people packed in there. And I think ultimately that I think they're just excited to have something to do. Like, I don't necessarily right. think that small people care as much right now. They will. Yeah. Um, so and I think they did at the end. <laughs> right. Yeah. So certainly a massive difference. Uh, right. With Rainey's fl- getting getting her dragon bursting up. I, w- I was expecting her to flee. But I guess I what I just it didn't like you're watching it and you're like, oh, my God, maybe she's getting her dragon and do something. But then you kind of forget about it because you see her sneak away. So they act like and then so much other stuff is going on. You actually kind of forget about her for a second and then just a boom explosion. And you're like, whoa, like it was awesome. I did she- think she was going to start torching people, but she didn't. Right. Yeah, I I'll be honest. What I thought was maybe happen- because there was no bells ringing. I I thought personally, so, you know, there was oh, no I bells. There's there. no bells ringing, so the dragon didn't freak out. And towards yeah, it's like, like you know, it's like whenever you scare a horse, you know, right? It's kind of same yeah. thing, right? That's what happens. Season yeah. eight. <laughs> um, you know what I thought? I thought they were gonna walk out of the dragon pit, and I thought it was gonna be like you know, Aegon smiling and his mother smiling, and then they look off in the distance and they just see. Th- the red queen flying away and be like, that's, kind, that's kind of what I thought would happen too. I didn't, I didn't think she was going to absolutely just like blow open um, like the floodgates, but the beast was, beneath I'm the there boards. For Let's there. I'm go. down. I'm there. I'm a hundred percent there for it. it was awesome. It was a huge, it was a great visual spectacle. The dragon just walking in and you're just like, you can just hear it screeching like oh, oh. so absolutely phenomenal. The scale of it works so well. And uh, dude, Rainey's Targaryen stand up. Like, let's go. Easily the most disrespected Targaryen of all time. My, one of my favorite, easily my favorite female uh, Targaryen right. that there is. And I, you know, put some respect on her name. That's all I'm saying. I will say when Allison is talking to her after she was sort of ca- uh, put, she was sort of put in the, um, you know, after they, they locked her in. Mm-hmm. she uh her plea to her did that even like me i mean does that even make sense it's like you were once supposed <laughs> to be a queen but you were scorned because you're a woman like basically so why would she side with you now it's like so obvious that she would side with the next woman who's about to get the chance she didn't have I think Allison is so diluted that she believes that R- Rainey's also believes that this is going to cause a civil war if they sit Rhaenyra on the throne. And she's saying, well, don't you know, hey, it's not so bad just to move from the shadows, right? It's not so bad to control the men on the throne. And then when Rainey's counters back and she said, like, you just want a window in your cage, essentially, I was like, God damn. Um, but yeah, this shows how diluted Allison is. And honestly, it's really, really good to have this scene because it just shows you that Allison's way of doing this, like she first off, she crowned Aegon like she crowned Aegon and she's like, but I don't want to kill Rhaenyra. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Dumb, dumb. And like, this is the fantasy land that she's kind of like living in. Right. Like, I just don't understand how Allison can sit here and think <laughs> that this is going to go well. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was. I was kind of shocked by that. I just by that a little bit. That that scene. I was just like, okay, well, I, it's good because at least she's trying to plea. Yes. Uh, for to plea to plea for it, but yeah, I just I, uh, I was like, I think it's me. meant to show that Allison's like reality she's living in is like way too optimistic. Like, there's just no way that's gonna happen. And then Ray, you know, and Rainey's just not taking shit from her and pulling away from her was awesome. I loved it. Also, yeah, Eric, n- oh. nothing. Absolutely. I was just like double checking here. Literally nothing in fire and blood about her even being there. Yeah, this is all this yeah, is a show yeah. added scene that I, I personally. Well, even her really even her being sort of locked, locked in the chamber and having to escape is not even in there. And I was like, let yeah. me just double check. But yeah, like nothing at all about it. Yeah. And also, let, let's uh, let's also just take a. A minute to kind of talk about what we talked about last week. We said that this was going to be the climax episode and maybe some fallout in 10. That is not the case. So that means next week that's that's the climax. Like that, I think that's what where we're going to see the true culmination of season one come together. So that's a bit of a break from uh from Game of Thrones, right? The season nine, or I'm sorry, the episode nine season. Oh, I don't know. I mean, technically, Viserys's funeral was this episode, Aegon was crowned king. I believe Joffrey was technically crowned king in episode nine, right? 
because yes, he's, I'm, he's 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 there yes. to he's there to 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 say that Ned Stark is. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. technically, I guess you know it's like episode eight because he then he gets imprisoned or you know, whatever. Um, but I mean, it was still a, you know it was still a, a an episode nine worthy penultimate episode of you have a big huge mega event and then episode 10 is going to be thing so i mean how do we think episode we have now this is the first week i have not watched the preview at all i have zero plans to watch it nice. um, so if you so if you've seen it let's not spoil it but what are we thinking for next week i i mean all i want to see is i want to see Rhaenyra's reaction um one difference from the book that we know as of now um and just to, i guess i should confirm this but i think we all know like Rhaenyra was not like eight nine months pregnant last episode in the books when she hears the news she's pregnant so that is a change she from might she might have been. she wasn't pregnant last episode was she oh no wait maybe, maybe she was i can't remember yeah. i think they she, chat I think she kinda, they sort of they sort of showed her and i uh, like okay well here with her hand on her stomach and I thought, well if that i thought she case, could have been yeah. okay so it, oh she was okay i'm sorry i i apologize i got that wrong believe it but or not she wasn't she wasn't she wasn't very far along at the i point. yeah she wasn't close to do okay i'm excited to see how rhaenyra reacts to the news how about that we'll go with that because i just read this piece of fire and blood today and i'm like oh All boy right. does it just end with her sitting with her sitting on the dragon stone. Like that's oh. the final shot. Maybe the final shots her taking off on the, dra- I don't know, dude, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see, but <laughs> I just want to see the reaction, like the visceral acting from Matt Smith. Oh, and Emma gonna, Darcy's going to be, Emma so Darcy's gonna be tremendous. Yeah. And it's going to, it's just going to be so good. Do you think next episode that we see Rainey's at dragon stone? Oh, I would say so. I mean, okay. where else? Is she? I guess she could fly back to to Driftmark. Maybe she wants to go find Corliss. Could be right because we don't right now. We don't know. Corliss had a fever. We don't know if he's alive or dead. Like it is up in the air. They're not sure. They stopped hearing from him. Uh, be very curious to see if maybe we see a Rainey's going on an adventure to find Corliss, or maybe you know she arrives at Dragonstone with news of Corliss. Like you know, we 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 got a lot to uh, to figure out on on uh, Team Black, don't we? Yeah, no, abs- absolutely. So, yeah, I, the only thing I, I think I do think a cool shot would be like Rhaenyra and Aegon. I, I, I don't know if it should be Aegon, but I, you need like maybe you have like a side by side shot or something or you do in a back and mm-hmm. forth between Alice and Rhaenyra. Yeah, Some, I, doing something like whether they're both sitting on the throne or so, however you're going to do it. But I think the last I feel like minutes. that it's got to be like a but I thought I read that Allison's not even in next episode. Really? Kind of like how kind of like how I think I thought the next episode, at least I haven't watched the preview, but from like on Twitter and Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire News is that the next episode is this episode supposed to be all greens. Next episode is supposed to be like all blacks. Yeah. So, I mean, if they leave Allison out, that that is an interesting decision, I think, to not have every actor in the finale. That's a decision. I'll have to see how it plays out. I could see people not enjoying that as much. But with that said, I I really feel like Matt Smith and Emma Darcy are the stars of the show. I mean, obviously, so is Olivia Cook and all these other people, right, that are on the green side. But real, really, especially for the fan favorites, I would say that the the Rhaenyra side um, is the one that people really want to see. So. Um, Ryan Turbush has a really good comment. He said Allison is holding to her past friendship with Rhaenyra. Does she really believe that their history can overcome the actions of usurping the throne? I'm not sure how I feel about that in this episode. I think so, Ryan. What I think she's holding on to is actually not the friendship. I think what she's holding, I mean, that's definitely a part of it. But the bigger thing is, is that she is trusting that Rhaenyra will believe her whenever she swears that her father said Aegon should set the throne. I think is she is literally putting full fledged faith which for the basis of how she has become extraordinarily pious, I think that makes sense, but she's putting all of her faith in the fact that Rhaenyra will honor her dad's last wish. Now, (laughs) I think we know that Rhaenyra has no intention of believing this uh, and and would be a fool too. Uh, And also Rhaenyra is probably going to, you know, maybe she'll actually get to hear more of the last words like we did, which obviously made it seem like Viserys thought it was Rhaenyra. And Rhaenyra's gonna be like, no, idiot. He thought he was talking to me. 
right? Yeah. So they could play with it a lot of ways, but I do believe that it's Allison being a bit too optimistic, thinking that people are going to trust the word um, that Viserys wanted Aegon on the throne, right? Right, especially because she is in the room with him, and it's all of a sudden, and the last, you know, it's like it happens the same day. Also, like, what would cause Viserys, as we see him, literally his last day, mm -hmm. is to walk to the throne and defend Rhaenyra, <laughs> yeah. and then suddenly, out of nowhere, say, well, actually, I want Aegon on the throne. Yeah, I think if anything, uh, it definitely may, puts it in the light where like we, we, we've we been kind of talking about how Allison is a lot more sympathetic in the show at this point and also is like very like the factions are more complex than like everyone on this side just wants this and they have different ideas of how to do it and they have different reasons for doing it. But the one thing you have to say is that Allison definitely comes off like sheltered and a bit naive, which isn't totally inconsistent with what we've seen up to this point. I mean, remember whenever she sends Laris this absolute creeper out to take care of things, and then she's appalled to find out that he murdered his family. And it's like, well, what did you think was going to happen, Allison? So, like, it's almost like she's too naive to be playing the Game of Thrones, but uh, nonetheless, she is there and she's in it. So, without a doubt, I think that you could say that Allison seems uh, pretty dumb at times, but I don't think it's necessarily a misstep. I think it's intentional for the show. Um, which if you're team green, I could see that being a little bit grating, but that is the characterization that they've chosen to uh, proceed with. Yeah. That's fine. How sick was like the armor she's wearing it, and it, everything. So just so I'm such a rainy's mark. Like I love it. <laughs> so, so unbelievable. Yeah. And um, I just uh, pull it. I'm looking at going through Twitter right now just to see, uh, you know, the reaction. I always try to get, I always try to get that up, but yeah, the, I'm very curious to see how Rhaenyra takes it, especially because Alicent is going to, at some point, they're going to have a conversation, probably at some point, I would guess next season, they'll have a conversation and it's going to be about the Song of Ice and Fire. And as yeah. soon as Rhaenyra hears that, that is going to cause a little bit of doubt right that's going to cut mm -hmm. because that's supposed to be the secret that's passed down which one is just an insanely awesome thing because it ends up tying all the way into like Jon Snow and Rhaegar Targaryen and all and all of the cool stuff that happens towards the main series of books but now this is a huge deal here because it's a signal oh hey uh oh if she actually knows that then maybe he did want Aegon and that will be something that is used later yeah, and Allison doesn't have all the details, right? She only has a certain piece of it because um, at the fire, when they're talking about at the board, uh, the the hunt, right at the uh, whatever episode that was three, two, can't remember. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he kind of he gives her things about the burden of it and yada, yada, yada. His is a song of ice and fire. But like he, Rhaenyra knows way more. So it'll be interesting to see if she ends up relaying an event to Allison. I doubt it. Uh, maybe she would just laugh, like you have no idea what you're even messing with at this point. Um, but we, we can say for sure that it's going to play a, a major role in this war for sure. Uh, Twitter's just exploding and it's nothing but Rainey's <laughs> stuff. Everyone's just like, oh, you know, if you had just said Dracarys, you could have ended the whole thing, right? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> like like this like this one right here is just great let me let me get this one up on the, on the screen for those of you guys listening uh, on twitter it's like you know watching watching rainy's not burn the high tower <laughs> 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 oh, uh, you're just like oh my god you could have ended it right there it's just like actually in game of thrones when sansa is there with joffrey and you're like just freaking push him just or push him or, uh, you know, whenever Renly offers Ned, like, hey, I got my boys here. We can take it right now. And Ned's like, oh, no, everything's going to be chill. And then, you know, loses his head. <laughs> I know. I know. I Rainies know. will probably look back on this moment and go, I should have just burned it to the ground. The whole you know, thing. So cool, though, to give her this epic moment mm -hmm. because... You know, the whole her whole story is, you know, the queen that never was 
And then my God, I mean, also shout out, I'll look up the actress's name because it's just not one that immediately pops out of my head, but her, her relationship with, uh, you know, Steve Trussant, who plays Corliss, they have been just so good. Yeah. We've the been role. Very and then and very, and then to get this just absolutely epic <laughs> moment in this episode and what like that means for her character right in the books now it's totally headcanon for me I mean, totally just <laughs> that this that this event happens is just so cool and it just makes that character so much more beloved right yeah and now you know allison was saying that if rainy stays here and they can't use her dragon that rainier might be willing to treat which also to be fair is true right they have vagar and if they have the red queen as well that might be another reason why Allison felt comfortable. <laughs> What's up, Lady Teresa? Um, she has us on mute because she's two episodes behind. But I understand. We don't want to spoil yes. anything. But that that you know, kind of going back, actually, when Ryan was saying about how Allison, like, why would she think that this was going to work? Well, one of the things that we kind of forgot about to mention is the fact that Rainey's is locked up and they have her dragon, and she's not going to be able to go and join the Blacks. So they basically have two massive massive ancient dragons and with those two you could argue they probably have the upper hand right and also at this point rhaenyra only has a bunch of minor lords that are swearing fealty to her obviously the veil is probably going to be uh pro rhaenyra because they're actually led by uh jane i think at this point and if Rhaenyra's secession is questioned, uh, then the Vale's leader would also be questioned. But that's stuff that we'll get into a little bit later down the line. But I think with the fact that Allison has the knowledge, or at least thinks that it's true, that Rhaenys is still locked up and that her dragon is not going to go to the other side, that she's like, even if this is a risky thing, and that even if Rhaenyra gets mad, she's going to have no options. Like, there are no other options for her. She can't go to war with us, not with Vagar. Uh, and the Red Queen sitting here. So that's another yeah. little detail that kind of, I think actually makes Allison seem a little less ditzy uh, for making this move. Dude, look at that shot. It's so sick. <laughs> it was My just powerful God. too, because we've seen dragons in this season. And that's one of the things they said, they were talking about how, how awesome, you know, we're going to, there's going to be a lot more dragons, especially compared to Game of Thrones. In all honesty, while we've seen them, I actually think you could almost argue the dragons have been a little kind of underwhelming this season. I mean, if I really had to get like nitpicky, I mean, obviously, like, you know, like because they've just been, oh, we see them flying on them, but we don't ever really see them do anything mm -hmm. like super particular cool other than say when um Damon is fighting the crab beater and he's just kind of torching that army. But even then, it's like they just go and they went and they hid. So yeah, you know, didn't really. Didn't Lena's really episode look. with the dragon uh, with Vagar is the best. That's the best dragon episode I, or dragon scene, I think. Wow. Well, no, it's this is the best. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, until yeah. this point. <laughs> until this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm getting to is like, this was the this was like the epic, just awesome, powerful dragon scene that I've been sort of hoping for uh, all season right yeah. i th this was this was definitely the scene that i think we've been hoping for i mean obviously aemon claiming vagar was cool but they didn't really do anything it's just a cool scene of him yeah you know of him claiming him but this was like the the first time where it's like oh no like dragons are a big deal and oh, yeah. yeah i mean it, it's a it's a massive way of trying to wage war and also figure out who has the upper hand um also, people are saying that it's not the Dragon Pit, that it's the Sept. We have I been saying Dragon Pit? No, I've been this. This was this was the Dragon Pit. This is the Dragon Pit, right? Yeah, I thought. Yeah, because so. no, even it, it, doesn't Allison say we'll do it at the Dragon Pit? I think she says yeah. that, right? Okay. And that's where she goes. She goes underneath and gets the dragon because it's yeah. That's that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. I was making sure I wasn't crazy. Um, no, this yeah this this was the Dragon Pit absolutely because she she was saying because she was saying I need to get to the Dragon Pit so I can get my dragon. Mm -hmm. Right, and then when she ends up looking and seeing where the whole thing is taking place, she smiles. Remember, okay, I thought I, was, faith. I thought and we then were she right. Sneaks, yeah. Right. How I'm else would she sure. get? How else would she get the dragon underneath? Right. Okay, I just need to double check myself for sanity because no, I was for sure. sure. Some people in the chat too. Some people in the chat. I was just yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So uh, for those who are wondering, you know, where where's going to be more of the dragon stuff? We're going to have a lot of dragon warfare coming up. So uh, oh, season two, season two. And potentially up to four, which remember there was that uh, update by 
George. We did a YouTube video of it, and then we did a bigger, longer uh, Patreon episode about it. You guys can check that out, um, as well as on Apple Premium, which should be back up. Uh, it was down for a little bit as we were doing some behind the scenes stuff, maneuvering stuff around. But um, Jimmy and I did like an hour long conversation about. And it's spoiler territory for those of you guys who want spoilers of what it means to potentially have four seasons, mm -hmm. which would be four. So George Martin in an update said he hopes it gets four seasons of what he feels like it would take. So 40 episodes yeah. total. So we're nine episodes in. And I feel like the pacing now, now that I can sort of put that in my mind, because we were kind of thinking three to five. So, uh, yeah, I mean, what are we thinking now that we're nine episodes into potentially a 40 episode show? <laughs> we're just getting started, brother. We're just getting right. started. Like we're going to have, you know, if it, let's say everything takes at least a, a, a one and a half years, right? We're going to have this show for another five, six years. I mean, that's crazy right. to me. Uh, to right. think that, that me and you will be coming back here about every year and a half and, uh, firing up the old engine. And then also keeping y'all entertained in between the seasons because don't get it twisted. Right. After next week, it's full throttle ahead, folks. We're getting back into the weekly reread. There's going to yes. be more reviews about this season. What is the come? All the news and updates that you can handle. Uh, you know, there's always good off season drama and stuff. So it, right? You know, I I have a there's friend. There's a there's a fire and sorry to cut you off, but there is a fire and blood companion book coming out in a few weeks. That's true, and uh, you know maybe we can. Uh, Actually, start... I think it's next week. You know, it would be fun if we did a, a bit of a read through for um, the Fire and Blood content to this point. Like I think it comes out next Tuesday. Tuesday. Is it next? Yeah, it is. It is next Tuesday. Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, crazy. Absolutely. So, yeah, there will be. Yeah, just yeah, just because the show will be ending. And then, of course, we'll we'll have to we'll still have to do some bigger, um, you know, like after the following week, we'll do like a big breakdown of what do we think of season this review yeah. and then of course now like what does this do with the book canon as well as like game of thrones canon like just the show verse yeah and what does that mean because there's just so many awesome connections that this this show will have have made um can we pull up uh bangus kong's first comment he said is there a reason other than the plot that rainies didn't torch them felt like the show wanted an epic moment at the expense of character logic i i disagree completely uh, and the reason why I don't think it goes against character logic is because you are a Targaryen. The dynasty has to stay intact. If you burn the entire and also remember all of the small people now believe that Aegon is supposed to be king. They believe that Viserys' last words were this. So if Rhaenys burns all of them, that immediately makes Rhaenys and her entire side usurpers. And then and you're talking about a rebellion kinslayers and kinslayers which is definitely which is... considered to be one of the biggest <laughs> crimes right like you doesn't right. get much bigger than that yeah Kinsla um, kinslaying is a huge deal and i did and especially her looking at allison i thought yeah was was it was just a very yes a very very impactful moment but no i do get it because you're like hold on a second but that is really kind of not rainy's thing even up to this the point in this season where she's talked about like legitimate heirs and um you know yeah and also she's been very unreadable to this point uh rainy has yeah. been very hard to get a uh to put a finger on right and i also would like to point out the fact that we don't know if she's totally cool with Rhaenyra at this point. I mean, they had that tense conversation at the Weirwood. Obviously, she ended up backing her uh, in front of Viserys. Um, but that was only for the fact that she knew where this was going and that Viserys was backing her. So it, it's not as cut and dry as like she's going to run over and it's going to be like all hunky dory. She's an X factor. So yes. we, we, we need to keep an eye on her. So if anything, you know, if, if you think I'm full of it and that, committing uh <laughs> kinslaying and all this stuff if you think that that's not a good enough reason uh it's more the fact that like we need to wonder what rainies is thinking about doing next yeah yeah absolutely well also you know i you know rainies in that moment she wouldn't have just killed allison she would have killed allison and her children and helena yeah right and as somebody Amen. who had also had her children killed, even though she doesn't know that Lenor is still alive, I don't I don't know that that's something she would have really wanted to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because in and, theory, in theory, at this point, right, if you're 
living inside this world. You could just go tell Rhaenyra and Rhaenyra and Damon show up and the realm's like, well, actually, they're king. And yes, because uh, that's what Viserys said. So, yes. Um, and Ben, uh, Ben followed up said, I agree. Rhaenys is a pretty uh, opaque character. So indiscriminate murder isn't something we know she would do there. Yeah, I think it's more about like we should be asking why she didn't. And and you are right. So that's cool. But um, not so much as a show decision, but as like a character decision in in the plot. Like, why didn't she do that? And remember, Corliss has ambitions. Corliss has yes. a lot of ambitions. So. Yeah, uh, let's uh, let's see here. Um, what should we expect for the season finale? Yeah, so we did uh, just a, a few minutes or about probably, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, we did sort of our predictions for the for the next episode. But yeah, I mean, again, you know, what's going to be that final shot because it's ending the season. It's ending of a season one, a very strong season one. Um, obviously, we still have one episode to go, Jimmy. But, you know, I think next I think next week is still I still think it's going to end with some sort of Rhaenyra sitting on the sitting on Dragonstone and they're like, we're going to go. So there's going to be something or it's a tie to the song of ice and fire. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Something about like, Oh, it's about to kick off. Yeah. I have a feeling. I think I know what maybe the but, last you know, it's, scene it could be, be a little too spoilery, too yeah. spoilery. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Um, We still have one episode to go. And of course we will have, we will, you know, need some time to process. But where would you rank this season so far compared to Game of Thrones seasons? Oh, that's tough. I, I feel like I got to see episode 10. But I mean, this is definitely like towards the upper end of what I liked. Like season one through four for me, like the best television of all time. But five, six, seven and eight. Uh, obviously, seven, and eight are a little tougher. But five and six still had really, really good moments. Right. So I feel like. Mm -hmm. I would rank this above or maybe right with like a, a season six for its best moments. Oh, but okay. Yeah. But here's the thing. I think this is like way more consistent than that season. So it, it's hard. It's hard to pick, but I would say like upper half for sure. Yeah. I, to me, this feels obviously like visual effects and everything is better. This, I, honestly, I think I like it more. I can't say that I, it's hard. It's it's hard to say because like season four of Game of Thrones is so phenomenal and arguably like the best season in the history of television because uh, it's like Tyrion's trial and everything. And it's just like the peak of Game of Thrones, which is, you know, in theory, the best show in the history of television. Right. Because it has more Academy Awards than anything that's even remotely close. So. Yeah, it's, I right now I'm probably it's like with season two. Yeah, I could see that, which is great. That's a great thing, right? Um, so I feel like the ceiling is very high, and I said that about uh, Rings of Power as well, but that ceiling uh, is not one that I'll ever see because I'm not going to watch that anymore. Uh, but, <laughs> but with House of the Dragon, I can only imagine that the budget's going to get bigger, uh, and as long as the writing stays consistent, I think uh, we're going to have a lot more time to breathe, and I think it's actually going to be really awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. So awesome guys. Well, Hey, with that, um, be sure, you know, to, uh, check out some more content. We have a lot more on the channel, a lot more coming as well as extra content on Patreon. The Jimmy and I just did a huge Patreon episode, uh, as well as it will be on Apple premium here, uh, shortly and be sure to leave us comments and everything. And you guys can shoot us Ravens actually, uh, over at btkcast at gmail.com. And we do our best to get, uh, those bigger, longer theories into the show and read those. And I often make, you know, make dedicated YouTube videos out of some of your guys' questions and theories. So you can certainly, uh, be, uh, be, <laughs> be sure to do that. Um, and yeah, and we'll be back next week and then we'll do, uh, I, and planning i uh, just gonna figure out exactly what you know we'll have to schedule it but i want to do another we did these during game of thrones season eight and at the end of it is we we brought you guys on we did a what i called a raven's nest in which we had uh you guys come on we did like a big discord chat for the, some of you guys on our patreon which is really cool because then you guys can actually have your voice heard on the show and you guys can give 
your uh, thoughts and theories and opinions and all that stuff because we want to get your guys' voice on the show as well. So with that, we appreciate all of you guys coming and hanging out with us weekly. Like I said, we have a lot more coming. We'll be doing a lot more Fire and Blood and as well as House of the Dragon content. And then we will be going back to the reread, which is the main series where we just are, you know, kind of starting a storm of swords. So we'll be having a lot of that content and bigger theories. Jamie's working on a bearish and sell me theory right now. Yeah, so. we're going to be going into some yeah. <laughs> big time bearish and sell me lore. All yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. And then we can definitely get some more spoilery videos uh, yeah. for the rest of it to talk about what did we see in season one that will uh, you know, tie into the potentially next three seasons and how that's different than the books. So all of that stuff, like I said, yeah. as always, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And remember that winter is coming. Coming.